Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to compare SketchUp to Blender a little bit and kind of give my first impressions, particularly of the SketchUp application. So I was interested in SketchUp kind of as a 3D modeling tool uh, because Blender can be quite complicated at times and just sort of a pain in the butt to use if you're not really familiar with the interface. So in SketchUp, uh, you have some pretty nice tools, like the ability to create rectangles up here. So obviously creating a rectangle isn't that amazing in itself, but then if you combine it with things like the push up tool, you can like immediately create a giant box. And uh, you can also see it in scale with reference to this person over here. So I think right now, yeah, I'm using the meters version, which you can see down there. There's also a, uh, a, a template for measuring in inches and feet. But uh, kind of in general, I think that the tools that they provide here are kind of more aimed in the realms of people who are interested in architecture and houses. Um, given that, like, you look at the, uh, the materials over here, for instance, and it's all stuff that would be very useful for building houses. So like roofing over here, let's say we wanted that to be the roof. Now, I'm no expert of architecture, but probably a flat roof like that isn't actually that spectacular. So maybe we wanted to kind of curve it or, or angle it with triangles or that kind of thing. But yeah, it makes it very easy to paint different uh, surfaces. And uh, let's see if I can take these areas over here and create a like a kind of a triangular shape going over to the edge over there. Um, so obviously when you do it, uh, it'll probably look a little better there. I, I didn't hit it precisely. Let's see if we can actually get it right on the edge. Okay, so edge, edge, and then we want to make sure that we click on edge. And they give you these little guides which make it a lot easier to get it right. Um, like to do this kind of thing in Blender would have involved like well, yeah, you would click on vertices that would be here, 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 and here. Um, and then there'd be like a shortcut or something like that, which you press to create this face. But overall, I, I do feel like it's a lot easier to do that kind of thing in SketchUp. Just the tools are more uh, straightforward uh, than what you find in Blender. So you can play around with that and probably make some pretty cool houses and uh, that sort of thing. It's also got other tools like tape measuring. So if you're very interested in the distance. So let's see, what's the distance between here and here? 13.91 meters. So if you're doing room design or something like that, that's going to come in handy for very obvious reasons because you got to get those kind of um, room sizes uh, spot on, ideally. Uh, and yeah, I haven't delved too much into the SketchUp tool, but it does seem to be very easy to use. The downside is going to be that um, SketchUp isn't free necessarily. Uh, I, I think they provide it free for students, at least the SketchUp Make version, which is what I'm using right here. But to get all the tools for someone like uh, a professional architect or a professional modeler, um, the pro version after a 30-day trial is upwards of $700. I think they have uh, discounts for educators, that kind of thing. Like, I, I guess that would apply to me because I do all these tutorials. Actually, I'm not sure if it does, but I'm, I'm running it on a trial anyway. Um, but yeah, it, it is a very easy to use tool, and I can imagine just how you could just, uh, you know, pop up these different buildings over here very easily, and you can design things like, well, yeah, buildings, obviously, but maybe other things like uh, role-playing game mats or something like that. And I, I don't know if you want to go ahead and 3D print out these things. It's definitely designed so you can do that. Uh, but using these kind of landscapes, it, it's like a... Uh, a video game map editor's dream, in a sense. Actually, I kind of wonder how hard would it be to import these kinds of things into uh, engines like Unity. I'm sure you can do it. But anyway, let's move to Blender for a little bit. Okay, so here's the Blender interface, and if you've never seen Blender, then you'll notice that it's quite a bit more complicated than SketchUp happens to be. In the bottom section here, you can see that there's a timeline for doing animation, and there's also a lot of other windows you can pop up. Um, so I do suspect that in terms of what is actually possible, uh, you might be able to go further with Blender. Um, but yeah, once again, there is a pretty steep learning curve to learning all of this stuff. I can go ahead and open up a uh, model here. 
Also, being able to export and import different kinds of model types is pretty nice here. I don't think any of these are the SketchUp model type, though. So you might need a third-party plugin for that. So here we can go grab a Red Bull model that I've kind of played around with a little bit. You can see in the hierarchy view over here, I separated it into three different areas so that we had three different types of uh, textures to work on all those areas. Um, and that's in the Blender render. There's also other types of renders inside of Blender, like the Cycles render, which looks a lot better, but um, doesn't seem to have too much compatibility with exporting things outside of Blender. And uh, as long as you can learn the interface of Blender, it's it's not too bad. But yeah, once again, that learning curve is going to be offsetting for a lot of people. Um, like, for instance, let's go over to the material section. In SketchUp, there's an awful lot of pre-made materials. Uh, but here you got to play around with a lot of different settings in order to get things right. Like uh, for this specular, I think this is lighting. Which type of shader do you want? And then the diffuse lighting. What kind of shader do you want? What color should it be? What should the intensity be? And these are really only things that you would know by uh, kind of experience or watching an awful lot of Blender tutorials. Um, like, let's also check out the export menu. Because, okay, so let's say you went to export a file for the first time and you didn't actually know that there were export settings specific to every type of file you are exporting. Um, I mean, the uh, .dae, the Kalata export type, ha definitely has the most, but you can see here there's quite a lot of settings to play around with. Like, do you need to include the UV textures and the material textures? Uh, should you be including children? It, it can get a little bit confusing and frustrating at times. Whereas um, in SketchUp, I mean, I think I've only used it for like 10, 15 minutes. But already, it's pretty easy to do a lot of things. So I think if you want to add extra sides, it's like Control Plus or Control Minus uh, in order to create all kinds of different polygons. So it's like, okay, let's create one there. Let's pop it up. And I don't know, let's pop up this side. Okay, now this is some pretty elite architecture going on here. I'm sure that when you're actually good at using the tool, you can make stuff that's far better. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder, like, how would you actually connect that? I guess you could use a tool like these, and then this, and then connect those and fill it, something like that. Okay. Well, I'm not entirely sure, but I imagine it's not too much more complicated than that. So SketchUp versus Blender. Um, my initial thoughts, kind of in summary, are that SketchUp is pretty easy to use by the looks of it. Um, like right out of the box, the materials are pretty easy to work with. And I imagine even like a middle schooler or something like that could probably spend a day and uh, make a pretty decent looking house, at least on the outside. Whereas Blender is uh, definitely a tool that has quite a bit of power and it's free. It's also cross-platform. You can use it on Windows, Mac, and Linux. But the learning curve really does make it quite a bit of a pain. Like there's so many menus to go through and uh, then there's like different modes of viewing things. So like do you need to view something in texture mode, solid mode, wireframe mode? Um, and then where should you put the lights? All these other kinds of things that you just run into. It does complicate things. So I think that's going to be it for this video. Uh, I think both tools are definitely going to have their place, but uh, hopefully this can kind of give you an idea of which direction you want to go with in uh, whatever kind of modeling you're doing. Uh, I would say probably if you're just looking to play around, uh, probably start with SketchUp because you don't want to get too frustrated with Blender. But I've been Chris. Thanks for watching this brief comparison video, and I will see you guys in my future video content.